Hey everyone, Sam Mackay here from Enterprise DNA. I just want to do a bit of a deep dive into time-based cohort analysis. Now this is a this is a very short breakout session from a, a recent member-only event uh, held uh, for Enterprise DNA members. Now, what I wanted to show here was how I set up this cohort analysis because that's that, that truthfully is, is the most difficult thing when you're starting to run more advanced calculations like this how do you actually set up your data model so that you don't totally confuse yourself around how to actually make this all work okay and so I just wanted to show you a bit of the bit of the back end here but before I do that let, let's just show what sort of insights we, we're looking at here and also just a quick review of time-based cohort analysis Basically what cohorts are is just a fancy way to say segments or groupings of your um, of your dimensions or uh, variables in your in your data. So for example here, and this is a very common example, what we want to have a look at is we want to have a look at a, our groups of our customers. So we want to we want to create cohorts of when our customers first joined us or uh, first started using our software or our application and so in this particular case I've I've created cohorts of particular months okay so if a customer started in June 2017 that's their particular cohort July 2017 August 2017 that is their their cohort so it's not not grouping on say the um, amounts or uh, a number of times they've transacted with us we are grouping based on time so when they actually joined us in this particular case okay so how do we actually create these cohorts and then work it into our model? That's the that's the key thing I wanted to I wanted to work with you here. Now let's just have a quick look at our model. This is a pretty um, generic model, but surprisingly, uh, no, there's no surprises um, that this is a pretty this is standard, right? This is this is how you want to try and make your models look in most cases. Um, and you'll see here that I've got a bit of a I've got another layer of my lookup tables, and I'm going to show you why I've done that in a second. Okay, but we're going to work away and create these cohorts inside of the lookup table where we w in which we want to group our group a certain dimension so in this case customers we're grouping customers here okay so I'm going to jump to my customers table okay and so my my original customers table was just this and this okay that's all it was but what I want to do if we want to create these these groups this is the place that you want to do it okay this is where you want to uh, this is where you want want to create that um, segmenting. Now, in this particular case, first of all, I want to work out okay when did this customer when did this customer join us? Okay, in the demo data that I've got here, we're basically trying to work out when did the customer first log on. That's what that's what we're classifying in this case as when when a customer joined us. I mean, what this could be though is that this could this could very easily be you know when they signed up. Their, when they when they did an email sign up or when they first used uh, the trial uh, you know first entered into a trial of your application all of those things are relevant but this is basically what you've got the technique you've got to use you've got to find out okay when was that first initiated initiated um, connection with a, with the customer and the join date in this particular case so once I've got this very simple min of the login date and I wrapped it around and calculate to make sure I got the filter context correct and that gives me the first date. Now what I need to do is I need to work out what month that is, right? Because I want to create my cohorts based on what month they joined us, not on a particular date. But hopefully you can see that there's a bit of flexibility here. You could create any number of different cohorts in this case, but I want to join month cohort, month and year basically. Okay, so then what I did was I um, wanted to work out, I wanted to grab, I need, well I needed to grab the month and year column from the date table, okay? But to do that I needed to do a bit of logic here, so I um, work out what join date they have and then I work through all of the date table and work out what, what date equals the customer join date. And then once that equals to true, it's only going to evaluate to true one row there because this is with one singular date. When that evaluates to true, return the month and year column in that same table. Okay, and then I now have my join month cohorts. Okay, so halfway there. So once we've set up our cohort, now I want to show you why I have to create this table up here, this cohort months table. Now if we just left it at this, what could potentially happen, right, 
is that this might not actually have every iteration of a month and year because a customer may not have joined in any month and year. So we have to make sure that for our visualization's sake, because we want to see every single month down here, we actually need to make sure that every single month and year is referenced in a particular table because it might not be with this dynamic calculation with all of our customers, right? And remember, there's new customers coming on board all the time, so this should theoretically always update. So what I did was I had to create another table and I simply created it with this, okay, cohort months. I basically just went and summarized tables from the date table or columns from the date table, sorry. I went and grabbed the month and year column and I went and grabbed the index column which went along with that column, okay, and that's this this particular one uh, in, that, in that date table I have. Okay, so I just grabbed two columns from a much larger date table, like this one here, I went and just used summarize to grab, grab, um, grab these two tables. Okay, now let's just jump back here cohort months okay now I know I have every iteration right and and I also have a way to um, I also have a unique these are now unique values as well so you know these would be referenced many 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 times if they were in the date table but this is a unique column of values so it's it's a, a pure lookup table and we can join a one-to-many relationship from this one down to here and we know that it's going to filter all the way down to here which is where our, which is where our uh, calculator logic is going to be because of this relationship here okay okay so that's that was I guess the, the main concept around setting up your data model for this okay and, and a similar strategy would need to be implemented for whatever sort of cohorts you were trying to devise right it could be cohorts on you know, products or regions or, or 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 customers but this is a very relevant one because um, cohort analysis uh, has has been popularized by sort of SaaS applications and you want to be grouping your customers based on when they're churning right and that was the example that I went through during the full session um, for the member only event now once you have this all set up you now um, have a dimension here which you can place uh, in, into a matrix which gives you every single month the other interesting thing about cohort analysis is we're analyzing, we're trying to analyze things about the trends within these cohorts, right? And in this particular example, what I did is I wanted to work out what my churn, my churn was. You see here, I've got a sort of dynamic visualization here, which was pretty cool. Um, something I, I won't go through here, but I went through in depth during that session. But um, I wanted to work out my churn. So for example, I've got uh, 641 customers joined us in, the, in this cohort, 12 actually left us within the first period. Okay, so you have to actually generate some um, generic uh, logic or, or, or a generic table here which, which showcases what sort of periods um, you devise, okay? And so what I have done here is I created this uh, table here called cohort periods, okay? And in that table, I just said, okay, I put a, a, this is a sort of like a, um, a supporting table. That's what I, that's what I call it. Uh, and I've said, okay, well, period one is zero to 30 days. Period two is 30 to 60 days. Period three is 60 to 90 days. Okay, so you see how I've created these min and max days for every single period, sort of specifying the time range or the time window in which we want to analyze for, the, for each individual cohort, okay? And in this particular case, what I've done is, so in period two, I've worked out, okay, there was 14 customers in this particular cohort who churned in that particular period between 30 and 60 days. And as we can look down here, we can see, you know, how it changes for different cohorts. And I've also, what I've also got down here is how these percentages can change, right? And so percentages are, are almost a better way to look at it because absolute numbers, prob um, even though they do do sh show us a very valuable insight, say we were just trying to, trying to identify a trend, you know, is there a trend where lots of our customers are leaving us in a particular period? Well, that's where the percentage is going to be more valuable, right? Because that's that that's going to tell us, okay, well, for, um, is there you know in any unique cohort? some issues like are we did we drop the have we dropped off our marketing or advertising and not getting as much um sell through um from our or much stickability from our from our clients as we go through time you know all of those really great things really good insights right 
So the, I, I want to wrap the, up the video here. I just wanted to show you that sort of back end piece because I think that's where things get lost here a little bit. Um, but obviously there is um, some formulas that you need to go through here uh, and uh, these, these sort of dynamic um, dynamic churning formulas are what enable this sort of insight. Um, and, and it's and, and once, once you're gonna understand sort of some dynamic grouping techniques and with DAX, um, this this sort of stuff really does flow on nicely from that. Um, but this uh, m m maybe I'll cover it in a future video. Um, but definitely check out some of the scenario method events at Enterprise DNA Online if you do want to uh, if you do want to see how this was made in its entirety, um, because that was a there was a full over hour session on it. But um, hopefully I've given you some good ideas here around just you know, generally what cohort analysis is, then how you implement it, and then some of the um, and sort of just highlighting some of the formula ideas and techniques you've got to use as well. And then ultimately you can have a, in Power BI, I'm telling you, you can create some absolutely incredible analysis inside of Power BI around this cohort um, type work. I mean, it's just phenomenal. Uh, and it can be so dynamic. For example, I'll just show you one example. Say I wanted to actually individually look at customers in a specific cohort that churned, I can select inside of here and I've set up my table to go and down at an individual customer level, which is pretty unique, right? It's pretty powerful stuff. Okay, hope a bit longer than I wanted on this one, but hopefully you liked it. Hopefully you enjoyed seeing how this was all, all drawn up and all made and the techniques used. Um, don't forget to subscribe to Enterprise DNA TV. Lots of good content coming out to you and um, always appreciate a like on the video if you got a lot out of it. Okay, thanks a lot.